Welcome to the organic chemistry section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 56 to 60. So first I'll show you guys a question so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60. Now let's go through the questions together. Question 56 is saying, by definition, all organic compounds contain must contain blank. So if a compound is organic, what is the key element which it must contain? It is carbon. So that's just a very basic definition of organic chemistry. So think about any organic compound you know. It always contains carbon. And then that carbon might be bonded to some hydrogens, nitrogens, oxygens, chlorides, any type of elements that you know carbon to be you know covalently bound to but there always is a carbon. So, well, when we're talking about, you know, overall organic chemistry, there are some reagents that are used that are, you know, acids, bases, other things. Those are not, they can still be considered organic, but in organic chemistry, the fundamental element that we talk about is always carbon. All right, now moving on to question 57. The following molecule contains all of which all of which list of functional groups. So the options have a list of functional groups and then the following molecule contains which list of functional groups. So let's look at the functional groups. We have in the middle a benzene ring and then functional groups coming off of it. So this functional group, it's a specific type of carbonyl called a carboxylic acid. So a carboxylic acid. And then this one over here where we have a carbonyl that's connected to an oxygen and then there's an R group on the oxygen that is called an ester. So option A, that is correct. We have the carboxylic acid, we have an ester. Option B is incorrect. We do not have an alcohol. An alcohol would just be a carbon with some OH group attached, but then the carbon that the OH is attached to it should not have a double bonded O. As soon as you add that double bonded O, then it become, becomes a type of carbonyl group and it's so it's no longer a an alcohol. Like you might think that this OH over here in the carboxylic acid would be an alcohol, but no, this has been oxidized up to the carboxylic acid level. So there's no alcohol. There's no ketone either. A ketone is a carbonyl with two R groups on each side, but that is not present here. Option C is incorrect because it's saying that there is a ketone and also an ether. So you might think this group over here is an ether, an oxygen with R groups on either side. But once again, when we have that double bonded O, then it turns into a carbonyl, which is an ester. And then D is also incorrect because it says all of the incorrect functional groups. In question 58, we're asked, what is the absolute configuration of the carbon atoms labeled 1 and 2 respectively? So we want to know their absolute configuration. So in carbon 1, so this is just doing the stereochemistry rules. So carbon one, what is our, one more thing, we have, we have three bonds, right? So the fourth bond must be to a hydrogen. And then if we see that these two groups are coming out towards us, then the hydrogen, which is the lowest priority group, is in the back. So the highest priority group is going to be, first of all, this oxygen. And then next we have two carbons. But the carbon on the left is connected to a chloride. Therefore, it's going to be second priority whereas this carbon on the right is connected to other carbons. So here are our priorities, and then we see that this one is going clockwise, and our lowest priority is in the back, so carbon one is R, that's our priority. Now let's do that for carbon two, or actually I'll just keep those just in case. Now let's do this for carbon two, and we see that in carbon two, we now have the hydrogen coming towards us and the other groups are in the back. And this means that now whatever priority we get, we have to do the inverse of that because we're not looking at it from the right direction with the lowest priority in the back. So we just need to find out the priority for this or the orientation and then flip it. And then that's the correct stereochemistry. So this this carbon is connected to three carbons and then the one at the top is connected to an OH, the one at the bottom is connected to another carbon. 
but then this one over here to the left is connected to an oxygen and then also another carbon therefore this is carbon one and then this would be carbon two and then here would be carbon three and then the fourth priority is that hydrogen that's in the back and then once again we get a clockwise motion which would imply that it's r but we know that since hydrogen is not in the back it is actually s so our correct orientation or our absolute configuration is r for the first one s for the second so b is our correct answer in question 59 we're asked which of the following compounds is an l aldopentose so first of all for something to be l means that when we look at this the last carbon that has some chirality which would be this one here the second carbon from the bottom if the oh group if that is on the left then it's an l sugar otherwise if it's on the right then it's a d sugar so the ones that have it on the right we can remove it and that would just be option b but then we're also told that it's an aldopentose so pentose that pent part means that there are five carbons in the chain and then the aldo tells us that it's an aldol sorry an aldehyde and we see an aldehyde here and we do see five carbons so a is our correct answer the problem with b is that first of all it's a ketone and then secondly it's a d sugar so it's wrong on both accounts c also has a ketone so that would make it a keto pentose even though it is l and it is five carbons and then similar similar thing over here it is a ketone and therefore it's incorrect in question 60 we're asked how many chiral centers does the following molecule have so we're looking for chiral centers and remember a chiral center is a carbon which should be sp3 hybridized and then it should have four different groups attached and this structure makes it pretty simple for us to see because we only see chirality coming from one place which is this carbon none of the other carbons are really showing any type of stereochemistry so they're not showing that something is you know coming either towards us or away from us and if you actually just look at every carbon one by one you'll see like here it's attached to two hydrogens and all of them are have like multiple bonds to the same thing therefore they're not chiral so we only have that one chiral center so b is the correct answer here that's it for the questions in this video if you enjoyed what you saw make sure to check out our course the link is in the description below in that course we go through a lot more questions just like in this video and we go through all the different answer options explaining why each one is correct or incorrect other than that make sure to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date on the videos that we post here that's it for this video